We're back again on Lutherans Alive with Pastor Bill Henry from Trinity Evangelical Lutheran Church in New Brighton, talking today about radio ministry. Mm -hmm. Thanks again, Bill, for taking the time to come in and share with us. Again, thank you for having me. Um, we were, we've been talking about the aspects of radio ministry as, prepared, as compared to preaching in the congregation. Um, we also wanted to spend some time talking about the opportunities that it gives you uh, for uh, cooperation um, with local churches, other pastors, uh, ecumenical uh, opportunities. Um, I know you had a couple of interesting stories that would be worth sharing. Yeah, uh, whenever uh, we first began the ministry, before I'd even recorded the first program, a uh, day or two later, uh, I was talking on the phone with uh, Father James Gretz, who was the uh, the pastor at Holy Family Roman Catholic Parish in oh. New Brighton. And he said, guess what I'm going to be doing Sunday morning? Thinking you would never know. I would never <laughs> guess. And I said, you took the 6 o'clock block at the radio station, did it? And he was like rather crestfallen that I had guessed it that quickly. <laughs> yes. And... Uh, and he was doing. He is a a master catechist in the uh, in the Catholic Church. So his program, his half hour program, was based on uh, the Baltimore Catechism. Mm -hmm. And I, I warned him. I said, "You you make sure you've got a half an hour there. Give me a good lead in uh, at six <laughs> thirty. Well, we had done things together before, along with uh, Dr. Langdon Pegram, who is the uh, uh, the vicar at, at Christ Episcopal Church in uh, in New Brighton, uh, and she is there part-time she's also a pediatrician oh. uh, which is uh, which makes life very interesting but we had been doing and this will be I guess coming up in December this will be our seventh annual um, Advent lessons and carols program that our three congregations do uh, together we also get together to do stations of the cross on Sunday evenings during Lent with a discussion afterwards of basic differences and similarities between Lutherans, Roman Catholics, and Anglicans. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, there were several occasions, uh, since he had the 6 to 6.30 slot, and I had 6.30 to 7 o'clock, that uh, a, a couple years we were able to combine both to do a Christmas special. Oh, uh, one year we, uh, we simply took 10 favorite Christmas hymns, uh, carols, and explained the history behind them before we uh, then played them. Uh, also, um, Palm Sunday. One year we did the uh, uh, the Passion narrative according to Saint Luke and interspersed that with with appropriate music. Uh, another year we did uh, on Palm Sunday we did uh, Stations of the Cross and interspersed that with with music. So it was uh, it, those experiences were great fun yeah. having the three of us in one radio booth and mm. actually getting something down on tape that was usable because <laughs> we tend to have a good time when we get together. Unfortunately, Father Gretz uh, transferred to another parish uh, about a year and a half ago, uh, so that, that particular radio ministry no longer mm. exists. But I yeah. keep my eye open to see who might be in there next. There that, uh, we might be able to do something together. To have that kind of an opportunity gives you the, uh, the chance to, to be thinking creatively, to mm to be um, open to new possibilities. Uh, is there that kind of encouragement from the radio station as well to, to do something new, to do something different, to, to keep the listenership up, or, or do they like you to have a sense of consistency with what you're doing? One of the things that the owner of the station um, had expressed early on was uh, that they were deliberately, when they put out the call to various congregations that they had these times open, they were very specific in that they were looking for uh, Lutheran or Roman Catholic or Episcopalian uh, in that uh, a lot of their other religious programming on Sunday morning was from non-denominational or okay. interdenominational uh, uh, congregations. And so he was quite specific in what, what he was hoping to fill that time with. Okay. Uh, he lucked out getting a Roman Catholic and a Lutheran, <laughs> I think. That's my perspective. But, mm -hmm. but that's really what he was looking for. As long as I keep doing what I'm doing, everything is fine and dandy. If I wanted to do something different, it would probably be along the lines of content. Uh, perhaps at some point in the future, maybe I would like to take a year and uh, perhaps go through 
uh, almost like a an audio Fox's Book of Martyrs, and ah. and go through uh, the uh, we have twenty eight. Uh, lesser festivals in our church calendar mm -hmm. uh, and maybe devote a program to each of the apostles and the evangelists uh, and John the Baptist, Mary, Mother of our Lord, and just work through uh, those particular feast days and mm -hmm. make it more of a um, perhaps even a historical, biographical, traditional look mm -hmm. at those particular people from Bible times. That's something I've thought about. Sounds like there could be a lot of possibilities in there. And it could be a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. Do you occasionally in, invite guests or have you? I haven't up to this point. No. Uh, with scheduling it, normally I go in, I try to uh, go in every other week and record two programs. I'm always most comfortable when I have at least four programs in the can ready to go mm -hmm. because at a parish you never know what's what the next phone call is going to bring, yeah. and you may not get to the radio station and, and get something done. Uh, but up to this point, no, I haven't. Um, uh, as I said, I'm still, I'm very always concerned with the timing sure. of it, and so I, I tend to write everything mm -hmm. out and then time it before sure. I even go into the radio station. Conversation like this, I, I, I admire you being able to do this. <laughs> you have to be able to, at any given point, find a gracious out <laughs> where, from wherever the conversation happens right. to be. Sounds like what you've been doing is, is well, well done and well accepted. Um, and uh, as we come to different times of the year, to, to have that lectionary to, to lead you along the way. I get uh, letters from time to time, and one that I that I treasure is uh, uh, he's actually a Professor Emeritus uh, of uh, Psychology at Geneva University. He's also a Presbyterian minister uh, who wrote a very charming letter uh, thanking me for the radio wow. ministry, um, talking about you know some of the other things that are out there mm. uh, on the radio, uh, and and that. Uh, he was a regular listener, and I, I, I was quite touched by that letter. I thought yeah. that was wonderful. I think that is always a, a reassuring and fulfilling thing to know that uh, the Word is effective mm -hmm. and that we are being used in the ministries where the Lord has found a place for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, when, when you get that feedback, there are, there are plenty of other frustrations and aggravations sure. <laughs> in ministry that a good word every once in a while is a good thing. Yeah. So we want to give you a good word today also. Thank you. <laughs> and say thanks for doing such a good job in representing the church and the word uh, so well in that radio ministry. Keep up the good work and God's Thank blessing. Thank you. Thank you for being with us today on Lutherans Alive. We hope you've enjoyed this opportunity to hear about one pastor's special ministry in radio. And uh, if you're within listening distance, by all means, tune in and uh, enjoy those blessings and those gifts as you are able. Until next time, this is Lutherans Alive. Good day and God bless you.